So here to talk about how these suspects were identified, we're joined by Mitchell Silber, the executive director of the Community Security Initiative, which actually identified the initial threat made by one of those men, Christopher Brown. So good morning, Mr. Silber. Thanks for being here. Good morning. So let's talk about this case. When did your agency flag this threat, and how long did it take for you to realize that, that Christopher Brown was a danger? Sure. Well, uh, last Friday morning, our intelligence analysts were doing their regular tasks. And at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock a.m., as they were going through a, a set of threatening social media posts, they came upon this set of tweets that talked about attacking a synagogue, 10 o'clock at night, New York. And at that point, it suggested this might not be just idle chatter. Mm. So our organization immediately shared that information with Nassau and Suffolk County Police Department because we believe one of the individuals who turned out to be Brown lived in Long Island. Okay. We also shared that with FBI New York and then ultimately with the NYPD because we thought there was a chance that this might, this might uh, you know, cross over to New York City territory. So, um, so really early in the day on Friday, we were sharing that information with a number of agencies. Yeah, communication was quick here. But help us understand, because as a former director of intelligence and analyst for the NYPD, right, I'm sure you've come across this type of hate speech online before. There's been plenty of it, unfortunately. So what made this particularly stand out from other threats that you may have come across over the years? Well, you've hit upon a key point. There's a tremendous amount of hate speech out there, and even more so the last few weeks, given the changes at Twitter. But one of the things that our analysts are trained to do is try and make that distinction between what's just angry talk mm -hmm. and what's talk that sounds like it's going to lead to some type of mobilization to violence. And the fact that this individual specified synagogues and specified 10 o'clock on Friday night gave us the feeling that this had some immediacy that required it to be passed along and really pushed up the chain of command because we thought this might uh, become something live. You know, what might be unsettling for a lot of people in the Jewish community is that Hanukkah is less than a month away. Uh, do you usually see a rise in anti-Semitic threats during this time? And if so, what steps are you, are you taking to prevent any attacks? Sure. You know, unfortunately, in December of 2019, there was a deadly attack against a synagogue in Munsee, New York, so just north of New York City. Um, so we do consider the upcoming holiday season a, a cause for somewhat of concern. Mm -hmm. um, we're reviewing security protocols with all of the Jewish institutions in greater New York area to make sure that we've got safeguards in place. And we're continuing to coordinate with law enforcement as well as other Jewish security agencies to make sure that everybody has their has their defenses up as we come upon this uh, new holiday season. You know, and, and yesterday we were reporting uh, that there may be an increase of patrols in specific synagogues around the state. Are you hearing any of this? And if so, where? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, there, there are more synagogues, uh, schools, and JCCs in a sense that the NYPD can cover at a single moment. So they've got to rotate their, their, their forces, their patrol cars. But we're also getting reinforcements from the state police, which can also be helpful as well. So the idea is to try and have a show of force in a lot mm -hmm. of different places and deter any type of uh, violent activity. All right, Mitchell Silver, thank you so much. You're with the Community Security Initiative. We appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us this morning. Sure thing. Thank you. All right.